look on old trains like old love affairs, stirring mixed memories, telling scraps of powerful stories, churning up the past. The first book I ever wrote was about trains. I love the feeling of being inside the kaleidoscope that rail travel gives, of breaking down all the barriers, of flirting with life without having to make any lasting commitment. Trains funnel life through timetables, being their own excuse for always moving on. When I was eight years old and living in London, I first discovered trains as a means of truancy, and that's how they've remained, irrevocably linked with the idea of escape and romance. I don't know how else I could dip into so many other worlds without intruding. Un biglietto per Sao Paulo, per Europa. Trains are a common denominator. Anyone can travel. All you need is a ticket. One of my childhood dreams was to cross South America by train. When I was 17, I lived in Venezuela, but they don't have railways there. Now I'm about to embark on a 2,000 mile railway journey. Starting at Santos on the Atlantic coast, I hope to cross Brazil to the border at Corumbá and then on into Bolivia. This once prosperous commercial rail network is crumbling fast and may no longer exist by the end of the century. I'll need all the luck in the world to reach the end of the line. Santa Cruz de la Sierra. It seems fitting to start near the sea, perhaps because trains have carried me like the sea carries flotsam all over the world. Ships on the horizon are queuing to enter the new world via the busy port of Santos. I join the congregation of Brazilian day-trippers worshipping the sun and the sea before setting off on my own voyage of discovery. First stop, Sao Paulo, two hours away. Okay. You are American? No, I'm English. English? You're going to where? I'm going all the way across Brazil to Corumba. To Corumba? Uh, by train? All the way by train. Why not by plane? No, I like the train. You like train? Just are crazy. Like train. Everyone in Brazil travels by bus, by by plane, or by automobile. No, I really want to do the journey by train. By I, train. I like you like train? I love them. Yeah. This is the land of Villa Lobos, Brazil's national composer, and it's his music that echoes in my head. I feel as though we're heading for the edge of the world. As we tunnel through the mist, I can smell on its cold breath the scent of wild lilies and glimpse the ghostly remainder of what was once a great rainforest. My first ambition was to be a botanist. Instead, I became a writer, pressing words between paper instead of flowers. Is this Sao Paulo now? Yes, we are arriving now. We're arriving on time. Uh -oh. <laughs> the Brazilian trains usually run on time? Not, uh, let's say, really on time sometimes. Okay. Not the most auspicious words for the start of a journey. Sao Paulo is an endlessly expanding urban labor camp. The stalagmites of commerce tower over 17 million inhabitants. It's polluted here, it's dangerous, and it's riddled with drugs. It's been 10 years since I was last here, but the verdict is unchanged. Sao Paulo is not a pretty sight. Despite its surface wealth, the most striking thing about it is its poverty. Here I'm on the viaduct. And here I'm under it, together with the outcast families known as Miserables. In Sao Paulo, two million people live like this. Worse still is the plight of the street kids. 
In a world of abuse, drugs and violence, few make it to adulthood. Working on behalf of these miserables, clothing, feeding and defending them, is a brave man, Padre Lancelotti, who gives me a very disturbing insight into police methods of dealing with the homeless. O ano passado, a polícia militar de São Paulo matou mais de mil pessoas, entre eles várias, eh, várias crianças e adolescentes. E foi provado de que a maior parte do, daqueles que a polícia mata são pessoas inocentes. E qual é o problema com o narcotráfico? É um problema que os filhos participam em isso, o tráfico ou também são consumidores? São consumidores. Aqui em São Paulo, hoje, eles consomem muito crack, que é feito com um derivado da cocaína. Agora, eles trabalham para os narcotraficantes. Né? O menino que, que leva o, a droga de um lugar para o outro ganha mais do que um salário mínimo que um trabalhador ganha num mês, ele ganha num dia se ele fizer o transporte da, da droga. Né? Então, o narcotráfico hoje é um dos principais e mais graves problemas que nós vivemos. It's hard to know whether the drugs grow out of the urban decay or whether they create it. Next morning, I leave from Luz Station. Luz means light, but there's not much light in here. Then I didn't find much light in Sao Paulo. I'm a fortunate migrant able to leave the chaos where so many hopefuls find themselves trapped. I feel like an early explorer now, setting off on an adventure into the unknown. I'm heading for Bauru, eight hours distant, and it's such a relief to head into the interior, to see green instead of grey. follows the route of the 16th century conquistador, Alexio Garcia. But it could be anywhere, really. It's the travel that makes the journey for me, the motion. Greater travelers than I have stirred to the thought of great railway journeys. But when I say I love trains, I mean I love them all and everything about them. Instead of handing me my suitcase, I wish someone would take it from me. I've always been an eccentric dresser, but maybe this time I've come dressed for the part. This place seems to exist in a time warp. I'm intrigued by its name, Americana. I've got just two hours here, time to meet a local lady with the unlikely name of Judith McKnight Jones. This is uh, a Southern Confederate flag. It represents so much to us that are descendants of the people who came from there. Do you have any memorabilia here in the house of something like the flag? Something, or? yes, we have a few things. We have pictures. Oh, no. All of these men, they were veterans of the Civil War. Somebody on the station was telling me that uh, Sometimes people say that the, the Confederates fled here to Brazil, but I know there's a bit of contention about that. Well, what do you you get insulted at that word. <laughs> they did not flee. They were invited by the emperor to come and teach them to how to plant cotton. And so they brought their implements and their seed and their knowledge. They were a very separate group. They didn't know the Brazilian uh, language, the Portuguese language that we use in, in, in Brazil. And they kept to themselves because they were Protestants. I see. And Brazil was, is still the official Catholic 
a country. Okay. And, and I understand that there is an American cemetery somewhere near yes, here. Because the um, Protestants were not allowed to be buried in a Catholic cemetery. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. So they, they made their own. And do you yourself then have family? buried in this American oh, cemetery? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. On my mother's side, Norris mm -hmm. and Jones. Dr. Robert Norris, a Confederate veteran, born 1837, died 1913. Leaving the old Confederacy behind, I move on to Bauru, 190 miles away. I've been looking forward to a long ride. But this train didn't run for long. My prospective eight-hour journey stopped abruptly at Cordieropolis. Que foi que aconteceu? Foi um descarrilamento na entrada do pátio de Rio Claro. E com trem de carga. E o seguinte, o problema deve estar resolvido daqui 30 minutos. Quase. Não, foi um acidente simples. O trem só saiu da linha e vai ser recolocado na linha com macaco manual. Está de 30 minutos. O atraso está por volta de 30 minutos, mas vai ser resolvido. Brazilians have a habit of telling you what you want to hear. He obviously thought I was a 30 minuter. Timetables are minimalist here, so there are hazards in making a journey like this. There are few trains a week and they can't be relied on. Five steaming hours later, we're on our way. The tropical rainy season is nearly over here, but reflected still in the greenness of young sugarcane growing proud on either side of the track. I may not look like a farmer, but that's what I was for seven years on a sugar plantation in Venezuela. So I feel at home here. I share the heat and dust with incredibly friendly strangers or withdraw into my own thoughts at will. Even the sunset seems to linger to get the most out of the day. Bauru is one of those places you can't wait to get out of. It's noisy, brash and very hot. I escape into the oasis of a little railway museum. At least it's cool in here and there's a map. When I started in Santos I was following a plan and it all went fine. Santos, Sao Paulo, Campinas. Americana. The problem started at Cordieropolis with the derailment, which was supposed to delay us for 30 minutes, but actually was hours and hours, and meant that the bit of journey between Cordieropolis and Bauru, which is where there supposedly these wonderful orange groves and uh, hunchback Cebu cattle and beautiful views, I missed completely. It was dark. We couldn't see anything from the train. So I got as far as Bauru. And now I've got to get as far as Campo Grande. And that's the longest leg of the journey. It's almost a third of the distance. But the passenger service has just been suspended indefinitely due to nine derailments in the last week. I may be trapped in one of these cases as the stuffed remains of the last passenger to attempt to reach Campo Grande by rail. There must be a way out. Mira, yo tengo un problema muy grave, señor, porque quiero hacer mi viaje siempre en tren. The museum's guardian, Gabriel, lives up to his name. Me dicen que no hay manera en que puedo seguir porque no hay trenes pasajeros. I explain my problem, and he's sympathetic. No hay trenes de pasajeros, pero la administración puede facilitar el viaje. He tells me of a possible solution. It sounds complicated and unlikely, but I'm going to try and go for it. He throws me a lifeline in the guise of Ovidio, 
an old engine driver. Or video seems to be the key. I've been told I can find Ovidio behind the shed with his first wife. And here she is, a 70-year-old locomotive. And here he is. Hola, Signor Ovidio. Quiero hablar con un voz. Es un placer. Soy Lisa. Me dijo Gabriel que te podía encontrar aquí con esta bella locomotiva. Perfectamente. É uma velha locomotiva, mas muito bem conservada, reparada sempre aqui nas oficinas de, de, de volume, é magnífico. pelo pessoal nosso, mas é um material muito conservado. Ela puxa três carros de passageiro, em minha corrida. Pois é verdade, mas me disse Gabriel também, para ser sincero, me disse que há uma possibilidade que eu poderia viajar desde Bauru, Hacia Campo Grande en un tren de carga o algo, no entendí muy bien, pero me dijo que había una posibilidad. Una posibilidad, ¿eh? sí. Engatar los carros en un tren de carga, o vagón granadero, o tanque, y nos íbamos hasta allá, los carros, hasta Campo Grande. De Campo Grande a Corumbá, nos tenemos el tren de pasajeros. Pero yo puedo viajar en uno de esos trenes. Puede, ¿cómo que no? ¿Cuándo sería posible? Eh, hoy mismo no podemos ir. ¿Hoy? Hoy. Oh, pero qué bien. Ya, podemos ir ya. Podemos ir. Está formado o trem, nós podemos ir. Quando disse podemos, você também vai? Vamos, é. Vou acompanhar vocês até lá, até a fronteira. O que Ovidia não disse foi que eu estaria viajando em uma versão de peça do museu. Tendo me abraçado para o desconforto de 33 horas em um trem de trem, esta inesperada elegância me soube. Ela me pondera para as minhas ilusões de grandeza. This is how I've always imagined train journeys to be, slicing through tropical savannas in the style of a minor monarch. Perhaps if I start a new novel here, I won't ever have to get off. When I think of all the tacky trains I've virtually lived on, I can't help wondering what it would be like to live on this one. The precariousness of this journey gives it an elegiac tone, with the realization that it's no longer possible for the traveller to cross the Mato Grosso do Sol by rail. This splendid train has the poignancy of a swan song. I wonder if there'll be swan on the menu tonight, or beef. Almost the only living things you see on this route are the Cebu cattle cropping the grassland. Late into the night, a video told me tales of railwaymen and their adventures. Muita gente é ruim também, no modo de dizer, né? É, valente, não obedecia condutor de trem, ninguém. Como chegou um caso aqui, é, o Aicurus, um condutor, pediu um boleto, que é o bilhete. Aí o passageiro. Pegou num punhal assim, uma faca, espetou e deu. Ele imediatamente, delicadamente, pegou o bilhete, pôs na janela, tirou um revólver 38 e deu um tiro. Picotou. É, participou a passagem, entregou para ele. Aí ele. Aí se acalmou. Aí a coisa era brava. Não tinha polícia, não tinha nada. Isso era um mundão de Deus. The next day gives me a chance to explore. The freight train has stopped for a while. Ovidio told me about this old station, which is now the home of a local family. Boa tarde. Boa tarde, alguém aqui? Perhaps they waited for so long for the next train, they decided to cut their losses and set up home. Inside, it is thoroughly lived in. This kitchen was once the station's waiting room. 
Esse aqui é o fogão a gás, né? E esse aqui é o fogão de lenha que a gente cozinha também para ajudar o gás. Beyond, for as far as the eye can see, it's sugarcane. At 16, I married a Venezuelan plantation owner, and sugarcane used to be my life. Seeing it again is not much of a life for the cane cutters who toil long hours in the sweltering heat. In Venezuela, we made muscovado sugar. Here, it's mostly converted into alcohol to run cars. They used to have an awful lot of coffee in Brazil, but now it's virtually a cottage industry. This small family-run factory supplies only the local area. I'm told that coffee has been squeezed out of the market by orange juice. Any Brazilian will tell you that their coffee is the best in the world, but tastes change and foreign competition threatens. A once thriving economy is now looking decidedly sickly. This stretch is from Arasatuba to Campo Grande. I'm over halfway through my journey. It's been a week so far and I've covered 1,200 miles. Ovidio is tired tonight, so his stories are curtailed. He warns me to make the most of my comfortable bunk. The rest of the trip could be rough, so I'm going to enjoy my second night in this elegant tropical sauna. I've tried to make this journey twice before, years ago, and never got further than Sao Paulo. Now that it's happening, nothing's really going as planned. But I've travelled enough to know that timetables are like political manifestos. Your belief in them vanishes as soon as they're put into practice. So I still don't know if I'll actually make it to Santa Cruz de la Sierra. This is Campo Grande, and our distinctive Renfe engine pulls in with its antique freight. So it's hello to my suitcase again, and farewell to a video. <laughs> Campo Grande is on a plateau in the middle of nowhere. It was built to service troop trains defending the Brazilian border with Paraguay. It's now Americanized and proud of it, a new town catering for thriving cattle ranches. town and this is where the cowboy does his shopping. There's a whole range of accessories available here from lassos to hats to colorful sheepskins to soften saddles and those high-heeled pointed boots guaranteed to give the cowboy that peculiar walk. Oh, por favor. Esto que es? Para que sirve? Es un berrante, ¿eh? Ele serve para condutor de gado na estrada, assim, para chamar a atenção do gado, quando está meio esparramado, assim, então tem que tocar que dá um instrumento de, de apito, de sopa, assim. eu vou dar uma demonstração para você. <risos> From the rum fumes, it could have been an early breathalyzer. We're 
heading off into Pantanal country, the huge swamp area which extends for most of the rest of the journey. Traveling is it's not just the journey, it's the people. You never know who you'll meet. Gilmar Diaz turned out to be an authority on the railways. Para que os trens de passageiros e também de cargas é, circulem normalmente entre a Bolívia, Corumbá e o estado de São Paulo, e logicamente chegando até o Porto de Santos e também de Paranaguá. Outra coisa, mas por onde quer que vá, eu vejo que todo mundo vai em bus, vão em autobus, não vão em trem. Porque é isso? Eu digo, não, eu vou fazer a viagem em trem, vou fazer a viagem em trem, dizem para ele, está louca, porque nós todos viajamos em bus em Brasil. Sim, é que a viagem. Sim, a viagem de trem é uma viagem gostosa, é uma viagem alegre e mais confortável, apesar de mais de demorada. The next stop is Miranda, on the edge of the wetlands. Stops in Miranda are either for three minutes or three days. I've chosen to break my journey here to take a rest and see something of the countryside. The trains aren't quite as comfortable as Shilmar likes to think, especially on a long trip like this. The waters of the Pantanal may look serene, but under their surface are swarms of piranha fish. They share the water with crocodiles, who eat them. Although crocodile hunting has been outlawed, the demand for skins is catered for by authorised farms. An early pioneer is the Italian Angelo della More, which translates as the Angel of Love. His chat-up line of come and feed my crocodiles was irresistible. Se mangia molto oggi rimane un giorno o due senza mangiare. Ah, sì. eh. E sono pericolosi queste? No, queste spezie qua no. Che spezie? Po... Questo è Caiman, Crocodilus, Iacare. E ti ha dato qualche volta un morso uno no, di no, questi? No, 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 queste, queste qui no. Questo arriva al punto di minacciare, di arrivare anche sino a appoggiarsi forse alle gambe della gente, ma non attacca. Eh. Rispetta. Speriamo. <ride> sì, sì. <ride> Respect isn't the first word that comes to my mind. Questi sono gli ultimi nidi. Adesso con 60 giorni escono i, i coccodrillini. E questo calore Ma, infernale? È una strana questa. È, è questo calore che c'ha bisogno, bisogno per eclodere. Per non si vede. Faccio vedere tutto il mondo. Allora, quanto tempo hanno questi qua? Questi qui ce n'è di un giorno e ce n'è di cinque giorni. Ecco. No, non è niente, no, la testa è dura. Dai, sempre bene. Eh. Questo Dai. danno morsi così piccolini? Sì, 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 appena esce con la testa dall'uovo. Se fai un movimento veloce davanti alla bocca, lui procura prenderla. Solo con la testa fuori dal mondo. E qua c'è lui. Capite, piccolini, questo invece è un giorno. Questi qui poi, da qui a due anni, 
Doamne, să l-am asat, că să ajung și un putu. Păi știi, cu ce am un an? Să l-am un an, ia să fie. N-am mai cozi. Sino la etat de un an e mezzo, rimango în susta mezura. După că te dezinvolve più rapido. E după cosa se fac? Cosa se fac cu un... Noi aprofitiam... Le visere, noi le diamo un agliat de cocodrini per alimentarsi. La carne è venduta nei ristoranti e la pelle è semiconciata e va per l'Europa, va per l'Italia, anche spesso qui abbiamo compratori e le teste anche in balsamata. Allora Angelo, una mm. testa così, chi comprerebbe una testa così? Tutti quanti eh, turisti qui le comprano per curiosità, né, per un ricordo. Lo perché... portano a casa? Sì, sì, se lo portano anche all'estero. Perché qui l'unico che ha le teste è la Granja Caiman, qui in Miranda, in Mato Grosso del Sud. Gli altri allevatori non ce l'hanno, non le fanno. Io sono tassidermista, allora le preparo in approfitto. Così approfittiamo tutto il, il Caiman. E c'è allora... qualche sistema, ho visto che ci sono gli occhi di colori diversi, come sì, 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 quello, no, è, 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 è per il gusto, conforme eh. il turista eh. ha un gusto, cioè vuole il biondo con gli occhi azzurri, allora porta il biondo con gli occhi azzurri. <ride> The next day finds the magnificent five riding across the Clabine Nature Reserve some 30 miles outside Miranda. This reserve was founded by a paper manufacturer who's gone green. His land covers 40,000 acres of this terra de ningen, or nobody's land, and may protect the wildlife from the national threat of pollution. It's not Yul Brynner I find under this tree, but Dean Subble, my guide for the day. How was your trip this morning? It was fine, it was very hot, but uh, it was really good fun. Oh, welcome to the Phantom Isle. Thank you. I grew up in the less exotic world of South London, reading W.H. Hudson's accounts of bird life in South America. Now at last, an armchair ornithologist takes to the field. These are the Jabiru stalks. Uh -huh. Jabiru is derived from an Indian word, which means blown out with the wind. You can see his big neck. Why, why do they have that neck it, in particular like that? Uh, he expands it with air, mm. and then the neck has capillaries, mm. which uh, carry away the heat from the body. Oh, I see. And, and the wind takes away the heat. Are they breeding now? They are breeding now. Yeah. They live in pairs um, all their lives and have one giant nest which they use for about 50 years. I came across three fishermen by the stream. It was more than hot enough to swim, but I took some advice about the company. On the Jacare farm I went to, I was assured that these things weren't dangerous at all, that uh, you know, they'd just snap but they wouldn't bite. So if I was to walk out into that stream, do you think they're dangerous? Uh, not dangerous as such. Um, but they don't actually see very well, Kaiman. So if you were to come quite close to them and make a movement near to them, they'd probably snap at you. So that's quite a big as such, really, isn't it? The lesson's simple. Don't get into a bath with a half-blind set of teeth. What are those animals over there in the grass? Uh, grazing over there are capivara, the largest rodents in the world. Do they scare easily? They do. You can see the dominant male. And he's always on the lookout for anything approaching his group of capivara. My feet drag here, willing me to stay. But travelling's like flirting with life. It's like saying, I would stay and love you, but I have to go. This is my train. crossing the bridge over the river Salogra. It was built by the British, as was the line through the Pantanal to Corumba. Beyond that lies Santa Cruz de la Sierra. It's a journey that inspired the singer-songwriter Paolo Chimois, who serenaded me at a brief halt at Salogra.
Let's try to say in English. Okay. Enquanto este velho trem atravessa o Pantanal. While the old train crosses the Pantanal. O povo lá em casa espera que eu mande um postal. My family at my folks. home, my folks at home are waiting for me to send them a postcard. Dizendo que eu estou muito bem e vivo. Saying I'm really well and alive. Uma Santa Cruz de la Sierra. Destination Santa Cruz de la Sierra. Right. Now I'll sing it for you. Enquanto este velho trem atravessa o Pantanal, as estrelas do cruzeiro fazem um sinal de que esse é o melhor caminho para quem é como eu, mais um fugitivo da guerra. Enquanto este velho trem atravessa o Pantanal, o povo lá em casa espera que eu mande um postal Dizendo que eu estou muito bem e vivo Como a Santa Cruz de la Sierra Enquanto este velho trem Atravessa o Pantanal Só meu coração está batendo desigual ele agora sabe que o medo viaja também sobre todos os trilhos da terra. Uma Santa Cruz de la Sierra, sobre todos os trilhos da terra. Corumba, and we're late again. Yet time cannot pass slowly enough for me, because this is the last stop in Brazil, a country like a new friend I'll be sorry to leave. Corumba sits idyllically on the Rio Paraguay. In 1840, it was the biggest river port in the world. It was smuggling. Rumour has it that cocaine from across the border is processed here. Unless this is a city of hypochondriacs, there are certainly a lot of pharmacies. The bustle and the t-shirts could be anywhere, but the music is unmistakably Brazilian. This isn't a shop you'd find in every town. Guarana is a typical product made from the Guarana berry, found in the Amazon rainforest and used by native Indians as a stimulant and aphrodisiac. It's being hailed as the ultimate elixir. It tastes like swamp water, but I'm a glutton for herbal remedies and the dank little shops that sell them. I can see why explorers were seduced by Brazil and came and stayed here. The average Brazilian may not have a lot, but he knows how to make the most of it. This is an enchanted place with a rare balance between calm and excitement. It's an exuberant country of music, people, life and spirits. Talking of spirits, I think I'll have a nightcap. Years ago, the train used to stop at the Bolivian border for smugglers to disembark and carry their contraband across the frontier on foot, only to board again at a safe distance. Very much the same thing happened to me, except the only things I was concealing were a lot of dirty washing and an immense relief that after 14 days I'd managed to get here at all. And here it is, at last, Kihara Railway Station, the gateway to Bolivia. 
this is my chance to travel on the Orient Express. Kihara was strike bound today, and this, luckily for me, is an unscheduled train. The line from Kihara to Santa Cruz is called La Linea de la Muerte, or Line of Death. Some say because of its drug traffic, others its bandits and accident rate. The sinister name hasn't deterred any of the peasants or migrant workers from braving it today. Most of the passengers are Indian, and their poverty is blatant. This jam-packed train is, I'm told, relatively empty by Bolivian standards. To escape the heat, I'm going to join my suitcase in the open guards van and find it exceptionally well guarded. Some things haven't changed. Messages are still picked up by Hoop to tell the drivers what's happening along the line. Four hours later, it's lunchtime in Roboré, a small town in the middle of the jungle. They're selling the real fruits of the forest here. With only two trains a week, these children need to sell their plates of cooked food to survive. There's a ten minute rush to strike Lucky. In this democratic country, there's a slogan for Banza, the aging ex-dictator. Like every old showbiz personality, he cannot resist staging a comeback for the forthcoming election. Another long day's journey into night, heading for San Jose de Chiquitos, which is six and a half hours from the Brazilian border, and it's 15 days and 1,500 miles from where I started in Santos. The lost world of San Jose, a deserted one-horse town. And here's the horse. It's still the tail end of the rainy season, and this sleepy little town is beginning to shake itself awake. In San Jose, I came across a local sage with a lifetime's experience of the railway. Don Mario Prada is 80. ¿Por qué lo llaman la línea de la muerte, el tren de la muerte, el que va de Corumbá hasta Santa Cruz? Solo pasajeros que se suben al techo del 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 carro a veces para no pagar y después se caen y se cae pues. y como el ferrocarril no es no va así planito no va siempre sí. um, va y ven a veces un poco más acentuado y pongo al suelo no okay. ahora eso lo, pasa mucho sí lo frecuente no es tanto tampoco porque han aprendido a cuidarse Lo frecuente es que los borrachos, como es un lugar limpio, se duerma ahí en la línea. Y el, y el maquinista no tiene tiempo de, de frenar porque una locomotora que corre a 40 kilómetros por hora necesita casi 200 metros para parar. A una vaca se la ve, pero a un, a un tipo horizontal ahí sobre la línea, no se lo ve. Mira, y en los tiempos que estuvo ahí, ¿viste mucho contrabando? Cosas de, ¿viste pasar la cocaína o cómo fue? No. A mí me han propuesto, padre, que no digo un hombre, ¿no? Que saque cocaína a Brasil. Mm. Pero nunca lo hice, porque es un crimen de lesa humanidad. ¿no? Y estaría fuera de mi 
de mi manera de ser. No, no nací para delincuente. <laughs> the Mission Church of San Jose still dominates its square. In 1698, the Spanish Jesuits established 10 mission towns in the Bolivian jungle. These doubled as a defensive line against their Portuguese enemies and as sanctuaries for the Chiquitano Indians who were being pressed into slavery. Unlike Brazil, this is still an intensely Roman Catholic country. Shrines are commonplace and the church services are packed. Inside the fortified mission, work is in progress as the local people dedicate themselves to restoring their own church. When the Jesuits were expelled from South America in 1767, their missions fell into disrepair. Many have been swallowed by the jungle. San Jose is one of seven undergoing restoration. The project is now in its 20th year. Once again, this Indian settlement revolves around its church. For small communities such as San Jose, the railway, finished in 1950, is a lifeline, a point emphasized by a local community leader, Don Roque Romanasi. Eh, esta vía eh, se considera que es, es el monopolio del transporte porque no hay otra. Entonces, la gente viaja mucho porque de alguna manera eh, esto le reporta alguna ganancia yendo al Brasil y trayendo algo para vender. Entonces, como medio de subsistencia. ¿Has oído decir algo sobre este paro de trenes que puede ser que no hay trenes hoy o mañana? Bueno, han estado ayer en paro, ¿no es cierto?, de los trenes. Eh, no sé si esta huelga se ampliará, no sé absolutamente nada, pero todo es posible. What happened was, nothing happened. At the station, no trains were running, and straight answers were even harder to come by than trains. But there was a rumor of the possibility of a freight train to Santa Cruz. At last, I'm grateful for such a heavy suitcase. Nothing continued to happen for some time. Catching trains in Bolivia seems to be the triumph of hope over experience. And eventually, I was rewarded. Along came the Banzer Express, like the ex-dictator still running against all the odds. Particularly appetizing situation. Eight men, three mattresses, and a small goods van. And an entire night to pass. They think I'm off my head to make this journey, but I'm doing what I like best. The more difficult it seemed to reach, the more I set my heart on getting to Santa Cruz de la Sierra. The name sounds so romantic, and it's also the end of the line. Bound Santa Cruz station isn't really what I was expecting. Dropped off at a distant siding early in the morning, I make my way to the main building, which turns out to be in the style of and on the scale of an international air terminal. There's nothing romantic about this Santa Cruz. When there isn't a strike, 
This futuristic space station caters for two battered trains a day. Perhaps this is one of them. Arrivals don't always live up to their journeys, and I really don't feel that I've arrived yet. The old railway station of Santa Cruz is more like what I'd expected. It's full of echoes of bygone days. It's 150 miles to the next stretch of track, so this is it, as far as trains go. I knew when I set out that I'd be travelling along a dying artery to the heart of South America. Now I want to find the heart of Santa Cruz de la Sierra. Santa Cruz used to be the cocaine capital of Bolivia. It's oil rich and the birthplace of Banza, the ubiquitous ex-dictator. So perhaps this Miami-style wealth is not surprising. Given the virtual absence of roads, the proliferation of expensive Japanese cars is both surprising and absurd. Perhaps the rich buy them as garden ornaments. Despite its ostentation, Santa Cruz is not without its charm. Its typically Spanish colonial arcades gather the shade on a Sunday afternoon. This is a city of money, and it's a bank that dominates the main square. If this were in Brazil, people would be coming up to talk. But Bolivians seem to be a shyer race, I have to piece their character together from the jigsaw of faces. Only the young girls growing up fast and aching to be noticed communicate in smiles. This is a world away from Sao Paulo. On the cathedral steps, stranded Potosina Indians are chewing coca leaves. I feel they've come through time as well as distance, locked in their ancient ways. Like this sloth, I've woken from my dream to enjoy an exotic flower. It's funny how quickly you forget the miseries of travel. Now that my journey is over, a few vivid images have blotted out the rest, and they're what I'll remember most, along with the colours and the heat and the warmth of the people. We'd like to apologise for that brief interruption in that film. Next week, Mark Tully journeys to the Khyber Pass.